So that's the Mira, my retrieval device. It works great. I'm going to teach you guys how to make one. Hey everybody. So this is called the Mira. The miniaturized retrieval apparatus. I figure it's just a fun little name. and It's just to get your drone out of the tree. But I've had quite a few questions on it at this point, and I figure I'll show everyone how to make one for yourself. So let's hop on down to the table. Okay, so let's start with our components. We have a slingshot with the back guard. That's important. You actually need the arm brace. We have an ultralight fishing reel. You want it to be as small as possible, but you need some good distance. This one here already has fishing line on it. I didn't need to buy any. Oh well, I might return it. But anyway, so get yourself an ultralight reel. Uh, this thing is about five ounces, got a gear ratio of five to two to one, and it'll hold uh, anywhere from 200 yards of two pound to 90 yards of six pound test. I want six pound on here. I'm not really sure what's on here. We'll have to figure that out real quick. But you got some bright orange six pound test. So that should be enough to get us there. And I got it bright orange so it's easier to see. And of course, lead fishing weights. Some clamps in assorted sizes because I wasn't sure quite what size I would need. Now that I'm looking at it, I think the small ones are what we need. So let's go ahead and put this together real quick. It should only take a minute. All right, let's go ahead and get everything at least unpackaged and take a good look. All right, so at this point, I think we got everything out. Now, the reason I'm going to switch out this line for this line here is due to the fact that this is six pound test, and this is a lot smaller. If you look at the two next to each other, this one has a lot more oomph on it than the other one. Plus, this is bright orange. It'll be easier to see. So I'm going to go ahead and swap those out real quick. Now, the easiest way to do that is I'm just going to unspool it and throw it in a box for now. I may put it on some sort of spool at some point if I can find one, just to salvage the line in case I ever need it. But let's go ahead and do that real quick. Just testing to make sure nothing gets in the way of itself as I do this. See, there's a problem. It's gonna have to come out a little bit. All right, so I'm just gonna take a stab at it here and say about four to five degrees. Well, part of the beauty of this thing is the back comes off. That's why I get the marksman one in particular. If not, you can undo these all the way and get them right. But I don't gotta do that, so. Yeah, it should work. Yeah. Alright, let's go ahead and get this all tightened down. Alright, so as you can see, we now have a slingshot with a fishing reel attached. Now, if you get this in the right direction, it'll still fold up. So now we have a nice little compact system. Now what we're going to do is add the fishing line. I'm debating whether... Okay, so here she is all put together. So at this point, we're back from getting it down, and as you can see, I've made a couple of minor modifications. I decided that the slingshot band was a little too weak to get me up there. Now, that's not a problem for most of these normal slingshots. However, the particular one I picked didn't really hold up. If you look, 
there are a couple different places where it kind of tore itself apart. I may pull a little too hard, I don't know, but I got myself a heavy band to put onto the slingshot. It's a bit heavier pull and it makes everything easier for me. Now, the most important change that I made is the ammunition. Okay, as you can tell, I have a, just your standard key ring and a couple of zip ties here. Two zip ties going across and then two going up just to make sure that everything holds right to make a little holder for a dowel rod. I, I think it's a quarter inch dowel rod, maybe about eh, two, three feet in length. Um, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, bleh. And I put a half inch fishing weight on the end here. I just taped it down, you know, cross across and then around to have it all sit nice and tidy. As for the back here, in order to attach it, it's pretty simple. What we're going to do is we're going to take the end of the fishing line and maybe wrap it around four or five times. And you just take the same tape that you had with you to put the fishing weight on, some electrical tape. And go ahead and wrap that around it to hold the line. Now make sure the bottom of the line sticks out the bottom so you're not a dummy. And at this point it's attached. Okay, it's not attached beautifully or anything. It will come off, which is kind of what you want. It'll come out if you yank, if you get stuck in the tree. <clears throat> But what this allows it to do is actually go up into the tree and fall back down. It gives it enough weight and enough of a dangle. Well, I'm going to hit the camera there. But enough of a dangle that it actually slides back out of the tree nice and pretty. Now, things I would do differently if I were to remake this. I picked up an ultralight open cast reel because it's the kind of reel I'm used to. It's what I used when I was fishing. And it's a fairly simple system. It was also cheap. I think it was about $15 here for this. I'll go ahead and have links up in the description for everything here as well. But an open cast reel comes with its own problems. You know, you have to manage the flippy part. You have to make sure everything stays wrapped and whatnot. As you can see, it's falling apart on me. I'll deal with that in a minute. A uh, standard spin cast reel would work quite a bit better. It would take care of all this line and mess and everything, and you wouldn't have to worry about it so much. It does sit a little tighter to everything, but it would just make the entire process a little bit easier. The other thing I would change is the line weight. I picked up, because it's an ultralight reel, I picked up six pound test, I believe it is. Hang on, let me double check that. Yeah, I picked up six pound test. I do like the bright orange coloring on this. It makes it easy to see while it's in the tree, but it's only six pound test. It started having trouble at about 60 feet continuing to reel in you know the stress and the tension on it would start to get rather tight so i get something more like eight pound ten pound maybe even twelve pound if you can fit it in a reel but other than that <clears throat> everything worked great you can also buy a sling bow it's something that actually comes with this part already put together and everything that would allow you to skip a step of putting that on there. It is almost twice as expensive as your standard slingshot, however, so that's kind of up to you as to how much work you'd like to do. I mean, you know, for an extra, I have it in my house for free, I put this together, whereas some of you may not have any of these items available, and if that's worth it for you, then it's worth it for you. All right. So as for how to shoot it, I figure I should go over this real quick. It's pretty simple. What we're gonna do, is like I said, we got the weight on one end, we got the tape on the other. I'm gonna go ahead, I just kinda let it hang off my wrist because it's easy. But you take your fishing line, like I said, wrap it around four or five times here, and you're gonna go ahead and twist it all together. Alright, once you've got it all taped up, you're going to put it through your little key ring there to hold it as a little guide. You put it in with the fishing line. It can all go in there at the same time. And you get it centered in the pouch. You turn. You aim. You realize that you're having a problem with this one because it's not the right reel. <laughs> you turn. In, you aim. And you fire. Alright, once it goes where you need it to go, you click it back in. 
and it'll allow you to reel. It's also great when you miss because it's nice and simple to get it back. Alright, and the beauty of the whole system is if your dowel rod gets stuck and you just yank, the fishing line comes right out while it's in the tree, it should fall back down and you get everything back. Okay, now personally the best part of this system, as opposed to some of the other systems I've seen out there on the internet, is the fact that this, uh, with the folding brace, actually folds up. And you can loosen up the handle, and it folds in too. So this whole system will fold up nice and tight. So you can actually put it in your bag, or for me, since I have this little hook on the bottom, I'm going to be hanging it from my bag. That way I always have it with me. You know, take a stick with you, oh darn, something you can stick in a pocket, sling it next to the bag or something like that. Then you have your retrieval system with you at all times. One other thing I know I'm going to get some questions about is the rope I used. Well, this is 550 paracord. I picked this up from my local Home Depot. It was 30 bucks for 500 feet, I believe. It was a big old spool. You can also pick it up in 100 foot lengths for quite a bit less. Uh, however, I was 80 feet in the air. I needed at least 160 feet of cable. This is how much it actually is. It's 160 feet. So you could pick up 100 feet, 200 feet, whatever you think you're going to need. But this particular rope fits really well inside my little bag. So that's going to be coming with me all the time too. But that's about it. So if you like what I'm doing, go ahead and leave me a like down below. And if you want to see my videos as they come out, go ahead and click that subscribe button. That'll help me out a lot too. Also, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll get to them as fast as I can. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So I'll see all you guys and gals on the flip side. So you can pick up a hundred yard or a hundred bleh. this particular cable or get yourself an ultralight fishing what the small <laughs>